Okay, so here we are on um, the final. This is the final, the practice final exam, part one. I'm finishing part one, so I already did E. I'm on F, so two fifths percent change to a decimal. How do you how do you change a fraction to a decimal? Well, first off. You got a long divide, right? Bottom into the top, 5 goes into 2. Make it uh, 2.0, so it looks like 20, but it's still 2. And then line everything up. 5 goes into 20 four times. You put the 4 over the last digit of what you're going into. You're going into the 20, so the 0 is the last digit. 4 times 5 is 20, 0. Decimal goes straight up, so 0.4. So now there's a lot of students that tend to say, okay, good, 0.4 is my answer, that's my decimal, I'm done, next problem. The mistake in that is that we still haven't got rid of the percent symbol. You think, yeah, but we converted to decimal. Well, yeah, that just makes this fraction become 0.4. Two-fifths is 0.4. That's true, but the percentage is still there. We haven't got rid of that. That's a separate action. So how do you get rid of the percentage then? Well... You got to think about what is it, what it is. What's a percent symbol? Percent. That means per. What cent? How long is a century? One hundred cent. Cent. One cent is one one hundredth of a dollar. So we're saying percent. We're saying per hundred. We're saying divide by a hundred. That's why the symbol has a divide and two zeros. That's saying divide by a hundred. So what this thing is really saying then is it's point four divided by a hundred per 100, divide by 100. So what happens when you take 0.4 and you divide it by 100? When you divide by numbers, do they get bigger or smaller? It gets smaller, huh? It's going to go back two places. It's going to be 0. 0.004. That's the real answer, not 0.4. It's 0. 0.004 because the 0. 0.4 is just the two-fifths, and then the percentage means per 100, divide by 100, so that goes back two places. All right, let's try G. So on G, 82 and 9 tenths percent, 82.9, right? You know 9 tenths is 0.9. Now, again, can we stop there? A lot of people stop there. No, we haven't got, that was just converting the fraction to decimal, but we haven't got rid of the percent yet. That's a separate activity, isn't it? So now we're going to go, okay, so 82.9, and what does percent mean? Per 100, divide by 100. That's right, it's dividing by 100. So when you divide by 100, what does the decimal do? Back two places, 0 0.829. 0 0.829. There we go. All right, let's go on to part two. So now we're on the fi practice final exam, part two, question one. We've got 60 and 1,400. And so what we're going to do is break them down to primes, a little factor tree here. 6 times 10, use your calculator if you need to, if you're rusty on some of these, 2 times 3, 2 times 5. So the 60 breaks down to be 2 squared times 3 times 5. Now over here, the 1,400 breaks down to be 14 times 100, 2 times 7, 10 times 10, 2, 5, 2, 5. So we end up saying, okay, 1,400 has 1, 2, 3 twos. Two fives, two to the third, five squared, and a seven. There's the 1,400, there's the 60. All right, let's go to a fresh screen. All right, so 60's right here. 60 is two squared times three times five. And 1,400 is 2 cubed times 5 squared times 7. See so how I line things up? 2's over 2's, 3's over 3's, there's only one 3. 5's over 5's and 7's over 7's. So I line them all up. And now I want to form, first off, the GCD. Now, what does GCD mean? I hope coming out of this class you're comfortable with GCD. GCD means greatest common divisor. So it's the greatest number that divides in. So what's, 
what's the greatest number that goes into those those uh, two amount of twos? <laughs> I got two squared and got two cubed. So what's the greatest amount that goes in, that divides into those? Well, two squared, because that goes into both of them. If I did two cubed, that would not go into two squared. It's bigger than two squared. So the greatest number that goes into both of them is 2 squared. You might think, well, how about we just do 1, 2, say just 2 to the first, you know? Well, that, that does go into both of them, but that's not the greatest number that goes into both of them, is it? The greatest amount that goes into both of them is 2 squared. What's the greatest amount of 3s that goes into both of these? No 3s at all, right? You can't say, well, yeah, just do 1, 3. That goes in, yeah, it goes into him, but this guy doesn't have any 3s at all, so you can't have a 3 going into no 3s. So the greatest amount of threes that go into to the both of these guys, to both, is no threes at all, because one of them doesn't have any threes at all. What's the greatest amount of fives that, go, that divides into both those? Just one five, because this one just has five to the first. And what's the greatest amount of sevens that goes into both those? No sevens, because one of them has no sevens, so the greatest that goes in. So what do we have? Two squared times five? Twenty. So that means twenty is the greatest number that divides into 60, goes into 60 evenly, and goes into 1,400 evenly. It's the greatest, it's the biggest number that goes evenly into both those. No number bigger than 20 goes into both those, both 60 and 1,400 evenly. Now let's do the LCM right underneath. The LCM is going to be just the opposite, the least common multiple. Now what's a multiple? A multiple is a bigger number, like 6 is a multiple of 3. What do I mean by that? 6 is 3 multiplied by 2. Right? It's bigger. 6 is bigger. It's, it's a multiple of 3. It's 3 multiplied by something. It's one of 3's multiples. If you multiply 3 by 2, you'll get 6. So it's a bigger number. A multiple is a bigger number that the littler number goes into. Okay, but we want the lowest multiple. So you look at the two, two twos. You get two squared and two cubed. So what's the least thing they both fit into? Two cubed. Right? They'll both go into two cubed. Two cubed will go into two cubed, and two squared will go into two cubed. They think, might think, well, yeah, but two to the fourth will also work. Yeah, but that's not the lowest. They both go into two to the fourth for sure. But that's not the lowest thing they both go into. The lowest thing they both go into is 2 cubed. What about 2 squared? They don't both go into 2 squared. 2 cubed doesn't go into 2 squared. So the lowest thing they both go into is 2 cubed. How about when it comes to the next spot, the 3's? What's, there's no 3's here at all on the bottom one, but this has a single 3. What's the least they both go into? A single 3, 1 3. They both go into 1, 3. How about when it comes to 5s? What's the lowest they both go into? 5 squared. They both go into 5 squared, don't they? And what do these guys both go into? What's the lowest thing they both go into? A single 7. You might say, well, they go into 7 squared. Yeah, but the lowest thing they both go into is a single 7. Right? Because this has none at all, and this has 1. That both fits into 1. All right, so multiply that out in your calculator. I'm not sure what that is. What is that? Um, let me see. I'm going to use my calculator. So what I get here, um, getting a big number, 4,200. So 4,200 is the lowest number that 60 goes into evenly and 1,400 goes into evenly, the least common multiple of those two numbers. Okay, so here we are on part D. It's funny, it just goes A and D. I just cut some out. So let's come up here. Let's take the 500 and break it down. That's 5 times 100, and 100 is 10 times 10. That's 2 times 5, 2 times 5. So the 500 is what, two twos? And three fives. Two squared times five cubed. Right? One, two, three fives. Okay? And now the other one, the six hundred. 
is 6 times 100, and that's 10 times 10. 2, 5, 2, 5. So 600 is 2 squared. Oh, I forgot to finish this 6. 2 times 3, so it's actually 2 cubed, isn't it? So it's 2 cubed. Times 3, times 5 squared. Yeah, all right, so we get the breakdown of the 500 and the 600. Let's go to a fresh screen. All right, so what do we have here? We have um, 500 is 2 squared, 5 cubed. So I'll leave a space where I, for the threes there, for the next prime. Let's go back. 600 is, oops, I'm erasing stuff, is, is 2 cubed, 3, 5 squared. And that's 600. Yeah. Okay. So now underneath, we've got to do the GCD. GCD, first off. All right, that's, and now, um, that's the greatest amount that they have in common as a divisor. So it's the greatest number that can divide into both those. 2 squared, right? You re remember I gave you a memory device earlier. It's the lowest power. The easy way to remember it's just lowest power. It's like the opposite of what you might think. The greatest number that goes into them is the lower, or the lower, I should say, the lower power. So it's the lower power. What, what about when it comes to threes? What's the lower power? None at all. And what's the lower power here? Five squared. That's 100. So 100 is the greatest number that goes into both of those because that's the, that's the greatest number that divides into both of them. The greatest number of twos that goes into both these guys is two squared. The greatest number of threes is no threes, because this guy has none. And the greatest number of fives that divides into both these is five squared. Now, underneath, let's do the LCM. What's the LCM? That's the, I gave you a hint earlier, it's the higher, higher power. It's opposite of how you might think, huh? The, the LCM is the higher, the GC. The greatest common divisor is the lower. And that's because it's the we're looking for the least number that's a multiple of these two. Well, that would be 2 cubed. That's, that's a multiple. It's something they go into. It's something bigger than them that they both go into. What about when it comes to threes? What's the bigger amount of threes they both go into? The least one is a single three, right? No threes and a single three both go into a single three. And what about 5 squared, 5 cubed? What's the lowest number they both go into? 5 cubed. Right? Because they both go into 5 cubed. 5 squared and 5 cubed. All right, so if we multiply that out, what is what is that? It's going to be big again. So let me think. I'm using my calculator. It's, um... I'm getting 3,000. So... 3,000. That's the lots of 3 there. That's the lowest number that 60 and 1,400 both divide evenly. Oh, whoop. these answers go down here, don't they? 100 and 3,000 down here. It's the lowest number that 500 and 600 both divide evenly into. There we go. Okay, so on this one, we're supposed to find the smallest counting number that is divisible by the numbers 4 through 10. So we want a number that can be divided by the numbers 4 through 10. We want 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. We want some big number over here. Big number over here that all these numbers, 4 through 10, divide into. Right? A number that is divisible by all these numbers. So, well, if this big number is divisible by all of these, meaning all of these will divide into it, it's got to have all their pieces. So what, what are the, p, the prime pieces? What are the prime pieces in a 4? Two twos. So it's going to have to have two twos. 
with a five, there's there's nothing but a five. So it's going to have to have a five. You good so far? I'm just going to build it out of prime building blocks. So basically, so far, if, if four is going to divide into this big number, four's got two twos, this number's got to have two twos to hold the four. If the five is going to divide in, it's got to have a five. If six is going to divide in, it's got to have a two and a three. Now, it's already got plenty of twos, but it'll need to add a three to its list of pieces if it wants six to be able to divide into this big number. See, see how I've got a six really right here? I've got a, plenty of twos and a three. And if you've got a two and a three, two times three is six, you've got a six really. And six will divide into this number. Keep going. Seven. Well, you got seven is straight prime. Can't break it down. You need a seven. What about eight now? Eight is two times four, but break down the four, two times two. So eight is really three twos. So if eight is going to divide into this number, you've got to have three twos. So up this to three twos now. And eight will go in. Got eight. Let's go to nine. What is nine? Two threes. So I've got to up it to two threes now if I want nine to divide in. How about 10? What's in a 10? 2 times 5. I've already got that stuff. I already got a 2. I already got a, plenty of 2s, and I already got a 5. 10 already goes into this number. I don't need to add anything to it. This is it. This is the small. Now, why do we say that's the smallest number? Well, because I could always add other stuff. I could add an 11 or, or add some more, make 7 squared, add some more. So I could add more stuff, make a bigger number, and all these guys would still fit into it because all their stuff is still in there. But I'm supposed. But I want to do it minimalistically. I want to find the smallest thing I can build, and all these guys will go in. So build it out of just the pieces they need, which are these pieces, to go in. So this will be the smallest thing you can make that all these guys will go into. So what is this number? Use your calculator. If you multiply these together, here I go again for my calculator. You see, that's eight times five, forty. Um, 40 times 9 times 7, I'm getting 2520. 2520. 2520 is the smallest number that all those numbers go evenly into. All right, let's try part B there. Can we do the same thing? Basically, I want to build a number that all these guys go into. So here's my number over here. What does my number have to have if, if all these guys go into it? It's got to have a three. Four, break that down. Two twos, you've got to have two twos. Six, you've got to have two times three. And we already got a two and a three. We already got it, so we don't need any more. Eight, eight, you're going to have to have two times four, and that means two more twos. You've got to have three twos. So I've got to up the number of twos. So you see, we just keep putting in there what we need. Got eight. How about 12? 12 is 4 times 3, which is 2 twos and a 3. We've already got it. We've got plenty of twos and a 3. 12 already goes into this number. We've already got 2 twos and a 3. I don't need to add anything. Keep going. 15, you've got to have a 3 and a 5 if you want 15 to go in. I have a 3, but I don't have a 5 out of 5. And now 15 will go into it. 20. What's in a 20? 4 times 5 which is 2 times 2 times 5. Do we have two twos and a 5? Yeah, we already got that stuff. Two twos and a 5, we already have the stuff for 20 to divide in. So we don't need to add anything. Last, the 30. 6 times 5, which is 2, 3, 5. There's the guts of a 30. 2 times 3 times 5, we got it. Two, plenty of 2s times 3 times 5. We already got the stuff that, to make a 30. 30, this number already, 30 can go into it. 30 divides into it. So all these numbers divide into these right here. So this number, multiplied on your calculator, what is that? 40, 3, 4, that's 120. That's the number 120. So 120 is the smallest number you can make that all these guys, one at a time, will divide into 120. Okay, so uh, this is the problem. Basically, they're telling me, take 36, and what, what all these words say, Mr. Arboreto wants to plant fruit trees, in a rectangular array, uh, find all possible numbers of rows. Like, what are all the ways he can make, uh, th plant 36 fruit trees? So basically they're saying, find all numbers that 
divide evenly into 36. Or another way you could say it is find all divisors slash factors. That's synonymous, same thing. Find all divisors or factors of 36. Like what are all the things that divide evenly into 36? Well, let's take a look. How do you do it? Remember what you do? You take your 36 and you break it down. 6 times 6, 2 times 3, 2 times 3. So 36 then is 2 squared, 3 squared. It seems like it always starts with prime breakdown, huh? So there's the prime breakdown of a 36. It's 2 squared times 3 squared. And now we take that 36 and we say, okay, um, I'm going to, you start, remember you start with 1 and 1. Whoops, that's a big 1 there. Start with 1 and 1. Then you, and then this side I'll put the 2s, and this side I'll put the 3s. You could vice versa, it doesn't matter. Go times 2, times 2. That's 2 to the first, 2 squared, in other words. And up here you go times 3, times 3. That's 3 to the first, 3 squared. See how I went up to 3 squared, which is how many 3s I have, and up to 2 squared, which is 4, which is how many 2s I have. And then you make an array out of this. And basically... Any, any combination of these numbers will be a divisor. If you, see, see why this finds all the divisors, all the factors? It's because it's all the possible combinations of the pieces that go into a 36. The prime pieces that make a 36 are 2s and 3s. And so I've got, you know, no... no uh, no threes, one three, and two threes. No twos, one two, and two twos. So I've got all the different options of how many, of how many threes, and all the different options of how many twos. And so every way they can get together, that's got to be a divisor because it's just going to be made out of twos and threes. Here we go. So you just do this like a multiplication. Of one times one is one. One times three is three. One times nine is nine. 2, I'm multiplying 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 9 is 18, 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, and 4 times 9 is 36. Those numbers, those are all the numbers that are divisors of 36. So let's write them down. 1, 3, 9, 1, 3, 9, 2, 6, 18, 2, 6, 18 this out of the way here, 4, 12, 36, 4, 12, 36. those are all the numbers that divide, those are all the possible numbers, we, we for sure couldn't have missed any, those are all the possible divisors of 36, those are all the numbers that go into 36 evenly, because they're all the ways you can make combinations of the prime building blocks of a 36, the pieces of a 36 can get together. There we go. And that's all the different rows. So, you know, if Mr. Arborita was uh, doing different rectangular arrays, right? He could, he could do a 6x6 six six array. That would be um, 36 fruit trees. Or he could do, you know, um, all these different combinations of numbers. You know, he could do a 2x18 array. And, and on and on you go to, to plant his 36 fruit trees. Let's go into Part B. So Part B... Same thing for 12. So let's take 12. What do you do? You break it down. 4 times 3, 2 times 2. So 12 is 2 squared times 3. And now, so you, you make your rectangular array. You start with 1, start with 1. And I'll go times 2, times 2, up to 2 squared 4, times 3. And that's as far as we go. And then make your array like that. And then multiply the numbers on the inside. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. There they are. 1, 3, 2, 6. You can put them in any order. doesn't matter. 4, 12. There's all the numbers that go into a 12. Uh, part C should be easy. We'll do that right here. Part C, 23 is a prime number. You can't break 23 down. It only breaks down 1 times 23, so those are the only numbers that go into 23. 1 and 23. Let's go on to Part D, our next screen here. So Part D. 
uh, 144. So if you break down 144, it's 12 times 12. You can use your calculator. 4 times 3, 2, 2, 3. Same thing here. 4 times 3, 2, 2, 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4 twos and 2 threes. 4 twos and 2 threes. So, so we'll write over here 144 is 2 to the 4, 3 squared. 2 to the 4th, 3 squared. Okay. So let me uh, lay this out. So I'll go start with 1, start with 1. So times 3, times 3, up to 9, 3 squared. And then go times 2, times 2, times 2, times 2. 2 to the 4th is 16. So there we go. There's our array. I've got quite a bit of these. Okay. So what are our numbers? So 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and then times 3, all those numbers. 3, 6, 12, 24, 48, and then times 9, all those numbers. 9, 18, 36, 72, and 144. All those numbers are the numbers that go into. They're the factors or the divisors of 144. You can put all this stuff... On your full sheet of notes for the final exam, you get a full sheet of notes. Put, go ahead and put examples of these kind of problems down if you want. Okay, so here we are in number four. And um, so we want to put the right number in the blank. So we have 3, 4, 3, base 5 minus what is 1, 2, 4, base 5. So we're wondering what number can we subtract to get 1, 2, 4, base 5. Well, um, call this x if you want to try and trying to find x. Uh, think with me, how, how are we going to figure out what x is here? You, what I would do to make this simple is I would just think to myself, what, what is it they're really saying? What, I would try to make simple numbers. What if I just said 7? Whenever I can't understand something, I just make simple numbers. 7 minus x equals 3. What if, what if I just had simple numbers like that? What would the answer for x be? What, what, what would this need to be? This would be 7 minus what is 3? 4. Right, and how do you get that? You take this number minus that number, huh? 7 minus 3, and you get your answer. So what they're really saying is just take this minus that, right? It's 343 base 5 subtract. 1, 2, 4, base 5. See how I reasoned that out? See my strategy when I read a question that seems hard and confusing to me? I just make up simpler numbers. I just say, what if instead of this 3, 4, 3, base 5, I say, what if it's 7 minus x is instead of that 3? What would it be? Oh, it would be 4. And how do you get 4? 7 minus 3. Oh, it's left number minus right number. Oh, okay. Left number minus right number. All right, so let's do it. Let's subtract left number minus right number. So um, that's going to be the same on part A, part B, and part C. And then we'll have to think about D. It looks a little different. But A, B, and C are all going to be left number minus right number. All right, so now how do you subtract? Well, we need to borrow, don't we? We can't take, start over here, can't take 4 from 3. So you've got to borrow. So come up here to this 4. Take 1 away from it. Make it 3. But when you borrow, you know, you'll, you'll teach kids to borrow. They'll put a 1 there. But that's because they're in the base 10 system. And when you borrow from the next column over, you're borrowing 10. So 3 becomes 13 because you added 10 to it. But we're not in the base 10 system. We're in the base 5 system. So when I borrow from the next column over, I don't, I don't bring over 10. I bring over 5. So I add 5 to the 3. Not, you don't put a 1 in the front and make it 13. You're not adding 10 to it. You're not in the base 10 system. You're adting 5 to it. So it becomes 8. 8 minus 4 is 4. 3 minus 2 is 1, and 3 minus 1 is 2. 2, 1, 4, base 5. There's the answer. 2, 1, 4, base 5 is the answer. Okay, part B. So, whoops, I'll erase the numbers there. So, 1, 1, 0, oh, 1. Now, remember, it's left number minus right number. 1, 0, oh, 1, 0. Oh. It's all in the base 2 system. Okay. So here we go. Uh, 1 take away 0. That's easy. 1. Now I can't subtract 1 from nothing in the next column here. What do you do? You borrow. Make this 0. Now how much are you borrowing in the base 2 system? You're 
adding to, right? So whatever system you're in, that's how much you're borrowing. So 2 minus 1 is 1. 0 minus, these are both 0, so you don't need to write them. Our answer is 1, 1, base 2. 1, 1, base 2. Let's turn to part C. So T, E, T, base 12, minus 5. Okay, so I'm subtracting in the base 12 system. Now remember what T is 10 and E stands for 11 in the base 10 system. Sorry, base 12 system. So, all right, let's do it. So this is 10 minus 5. It's 5. And this is just T and E because there's nothing to subtract. That was easy. All right, T, E, 5. All right, let's do part D now. Now we're going to have to think again for part D. So part D says something plus X is something. So what does that mean? I would you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go seven plus X is ten or whatever. Right? I just I just took the form of their question, something plus something equals something. Made the number simple, put in an X and just now let's just think. What what would X be? Seven plus what is ten? Well three. And how do you get that? Right number minus left number, huh? Right minus left, ah. So then let's do that for our case. See how easy it is to do this? So take the right number, which is, how many zeros are there? One, two, three, four, five zeros. Four, five zeros, minus this, which is three zeros, a one. So three zeros and a one. So right number minus left number. Okay, here we go. Let's get, whoops, let's get this out of the way here, right minus left. Um, okay, base, we're in the base 2 system. So 0 minus 0, 0 minus 0, 0 minus 0, that's all easy. Now, we can't take 1 from nothing. Got to borrow. Got to borrow way back here. So you, to make that a 0, you take 1 from it. Now, what are you bringing to the next column? 2, right, because we're in the base 2 system. But we need to now borrow from that 2 because we got to get something over to here. So borrow, borrow from the 2, it becomes 1, bring over 2. You always, whenever you bring over it, you're always bringing over 2 in the base 2 system, just like in the base 10 system, we always bring over a 1, which is really 10, when we put a, num a 1 in front of a number. So that's the whole point of this, is that in other bases, you're doing the same thing as you are in base 10. It just helps you to think more precisely about the base 10 system. Here we go, 2 minus 1 is 1. 1, right, because this is now 2 minus 1, and this is 1 minus nothing, and the other one's nothing, so there we go. 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, base 2. Okay, so part A, 3, 2, base 5, times 3, base 5. We're multiplying in the base 5 system, so here we go. In base 5, 3 times 2 is 6, but oh, hold on, we can't write a 6. Remember, in base 5, you can't have a 5 or larger. Just like in our system, base 10, you, you can't have a 10 unless you, you can, yeah, you can, there it is, there's 10. Yeah, but we need two digits to do it. You can't make a 10 out of one digit, can you? It takes two digits, right? So, so in the base 5 system, you can't make a 5 with one digit. You can't just write 5. That'd be making 5 with one digit. No, no, no. So um, what, what do we do then? Well, remember how it works. Remember how the place values work. Let's, let's think about it for a minute. This is the ones place. Now, in our base, in the base 10 system, it's ones place, tens place, hundreds place, thousands place, right? And what are you doing every time? You're going times 10, times 10, times 10, right? So in the base 5 system, instead of multiplying by 10, 10, start, you start with 1, you always start with 1, times 5, times 5, this is 25, times 5, which is 1, 12, you're multiplying by 5 every time, that's how the base 5 system works, so how are we going to do 6, how do you make 6, 1, 5, and 1, 1, does that make sense? Because 1, 5 is 5, and 
One, one is one. That's six. That's five and one. So that's what you do with six. So over here in the side, I can write six is one, one in the base five system because it's one, five and one, one. So instead of writing six, I write one, one. I carry the one. Now let's do the next one. Three times three is nine. Add one is ten. Now how do I write ten in the base five system? Well, it's going to be two fives and no ones, because two fives is ten, and no ones. It's two O, oh. base five, two O, oh, and we're done with that problem. There's our first answer, so the answer here is 201 base 5. Let's try the next one. Okay, so now we're supposed to what? Is, it, is part B divide? It's divide. Part B and D there are divide. Okay, so I'm going to have to divide. So 32, so, okay, this could be a little tricky. So uh, 32 base 5 divided by 3 base 5. So the 3 is going into the 32, and we're all doing it in base 5. Okay, so 3 goes into 3 one time. That's easy. 0, bring down the 2. The 2's, um, no, 3 doesn't go into 2, so that's the remainder. The answer must be 1, remainder 2. That was easy. Oh, wait a minute. I, I forgot the zero needs to go there at the back. Why? Because you always, uh, I do have to do one more step. Remember, whenever you do law and division, I'm forgetting about law and division in my hand. You have to do the last digit. Remember, everything's lined up here. So you have to go all the way. There's not a decimal there. All the way to the last digit. So zero times three is zero, subtract, remainder two, that's the remainder, it's ten, remainder two, right, or at least you can just fill in the zero all the way to the end of the number, because that's where the decimal is, so you have to fill in zeros to the end of your number, so the answer is ten, remainder two, you know what I mean, like, what, what if I was going two into two hundred, I'd go one time, what, done, just, it's answer is one, no, you'd have to fill in zeros to the end of your number, huh, that's exactly what we did here. We went in once, and we had a remainder, but we have to fill in zeros to the end of the number, so it's 10, remainder 2. Let's go to part C. So part C, going to multiply those. So 40, well, I'm going to go to fresh screen. 44 times 25, base 6. 44 times 25, base 6. This is number 5C. Okay, let's do it. Uh, 4 times 5 is 20. Now 20, now you gotta, you got to remember we're in base 6 now. Base 6. Let me go down here and write base 6. You start with 1 and you go what? Times 6. Times 6. Probably all we need. So how do you make 20? Start, start, remember, you start with the biggest number you can. You can't use any 36s for 20, but you can use some 6s. How many 6s do you need to make 20? What's the most you can have? Three 6s, because 3 times 6 is 18, and then 2 more. So this is 32 base 6. So 4 times 5, 20, you write as 3, 6. No, not 3, 6, 3, 2. 3, 2, base 6. That's how you make that 20. Because that's 20 in base 6. It's 3, 6 is 18, and 2 more, 20. Next, 4 times 5. That's 20. Add 3. 23. Now, how do you make 23? Well, you need 3, 6s. That's 18, and then 5 more to make 23. It's 3, 5, base 6. 23 is 3, 5. So you bring down 3, 5. This is all base 6. Okay, now that one's done. Next, we start with the two, and we add a zero. Why do we add a zero? Because we're we're in we're one column over. Now, two times four is eight. How do you write eight in base six? What is eight in base six? It's one six and two more. One two, base six. It's six and two more. 
That's 8. That's 1, 2. So you go, okay, 1, 2. And then 2 times 4 is 8. Add 1 is 9. How do you write 9 in base 6? 1, 6, and 3 more. 1, 3. There we go. That's base 6. And then we got to add these up, and we got to add in base 6. So let's add these in base 6. What are we going to get? 2 and 0 is 2. 5 and 2 is 7. Oh, no. Hold on. Remember, in base 6, you're never going to see a 6 or bigger. You can't have it, not with one digit. So what do you do with 7 then? That's 1, 6, and 1 more. That's 1, 1, base 6, isn't it? So that 7 right there is 1, 1. And then add these three up. That's 6, 7, that's 7. Oh, no, no. 7 is 1, 1, base 6. 1, 1, and 1 and 1 is 2. 2, 1, 1, 2, base 6. Okay, so here we are in 5D. Go to our first screen for that. 132 divided by 3. Okay, so it's long. We'll turn it into a long division problem. 3 goes into 1, 3, 2. Let's keep things kind of carefully lined up. Okay, so here we go. 3 doesn't go into 1, so 3 goes into 13. How many times is 3? You might think, oh, I know, 3 goes into 13. Does it go in 4 times? Yeah, that's right, 3 times 4. We can write, as long as you're not writing a number 5 or bigger, remember, in base 5, you're never going to see a 5 or bigger. So that's all you have to worry about. 4 is fine. 3 times 4 is 12. That's exactly right. Okay, subtract. What do you get? 12 again. Then 3 goes into that. 4 times. 12 again. Now, did you see that that was completely wrong? I was kidding you. And that was wrong. Actually, I'm not kidding you. I'm getting confused myself. But it's a good exercise for both of us. That's wrong. What's wrong with that? Think, why didn't that work? What, what do you mean, what's the problem? Isn't 3 times 4 12? Well, not 12 in base 5. So what you need to do, so that's wrong. So what, what do we do then? Well, why is that wrong? Which, well, we'll see. Let me show you. I'm getting confused too, honestly. I, I went and looked at the answer and saw that was wrong. So let's go back here and let's think about it correctly. Basically, you've got to find out whatever you're dividing by, in this case, 3. You've got to find out what things, what the, what the times tables are for that number. What is 3 times 1? Well, that's just 3. That's easy. What's 3 times 2? Well, that's 6. Oh, no. Remember, in base 5, you're never going to see a 5 or bigger. Well, how are you going to do 6? Well, let me get some room down here. Let's write out the base, base 5. You're 1, 5, 25. Remember, you start with 1, you go times 5, times 5 in the base 5 systems. How are you going to make 6? What's that going to be? How are you going to make 6? It's going to be 1, 5, and 1 more. It's 1, 1. Base 5. Okay, okay. What's 3 times 3? Well, it's 9. Yeah, but how are you going to make 9? 1, 5, 1, 5, and 4 ones. Base 5. Okay. How about 3 times 4? Well, that's going to be 12. Yeah, but how do you make 12? How do you make 12 in base 5? That's 2 fives is 10 and 2 more. Right? 2, two fives is 10 and 2 more is 12. So it's 2, 2, base 5. And that's as far as we need to go because we don't need 3 times 5. Why not? Because you're never going to see a 5 in base 5. So just stop at 4. That's good enough. Now let's go back and take a look. We want to go into 13. Ah, that would be this one. Because you can't do 14 is too much and 22 is too much. So there it is. Um, so it would be 3 times 2. Times 2. And 2 times 3. 3 times 2 is 6, but it's 1, 1 in base 5. Subtract. 3 minus 3 minus 1 is 2. And bring down the 2. Ah, that's different, isn't it? And now... Now, 3 goes into 2, 2. How many times? What's well, right there? 3 times 4 is 2, 2. See, no way. 3 times 4 is 12. Yeah, it's 12, but that's 2, 2 in base 5. Remainder is 0. So there's our answer. The answer is 2, 4. Remainder 0. So it's important to remember. What did I do? Whatever you're dividing by, do those times tables on the side first, and that'll help you out. Okay, so now we're on to E. Long division again. So... Was it 
two ones, three zeros, base two divided by one zero base two. Okay. So let's do long division. One o. Oh, we'll bring it over here a little bit. Just one one o oh, o oh, o. Oh. It's all base two though. Okay, so what do you do? What was, what was I saying you do before you long divide in a foreign base? Take what you're dividing by, take it over on the side, and go times one, you know, times one, times two, times three, right? Get, get, get them ahead of time. Get your times tables in that foreign base system. That's what we did over here, right, for the dividing by three. I did three times one, three times two, three times three, and changed them all to base five answers so I had my times tables ahead of time. That way I knew three went into 13 only this many times, right? Okay, so times one. Now, but remember, where did I stop? I stopped at four because I didn't do three times five because you're never going to see a five in base five. Well, I'm in base 2 here. I'm in base 2. You're never going to see a 2 in base 2. So all we need is times 1. That's nice. It's 1 0 oh, base 2. That's all we need. So here we go. 1 0 oh goes into 1 1. Remember, line everything up. 1 goes in there one time. 1 0. Oh. Subtract 1, bring down the 0. Goes in there one time, one, no, oh, bring down the zero, zero. Well, it's just all zeros, but you got to do zeros to the end of the number, remember. One, so the answer is one, one, oh, oh, base two. Okay, finally, part F. I think we can do this one right here. One, oh, oh, one, oh, times one, no, oh, maybe we, well, I'll try to squeeze in. Let's see. Yeah, I think we can do it. Okay. So 0 times all these guys is just going to be 0. Same thing with this guy. Skip them. Do the 1. Before you do the 1, you've got to add two zeros because you're the third column over. And, am I, and then take that 1 times 0 is 0 times 1 is 1. 0, 0, 1. That's it. That's the number. There's nothing more to do. Okay, we're on number 6. Convert 62 to base 4. Well, let me write out the base 4 place. The 1's place, 4's place, 16's place, 64. Now, how am I doing that? Remember, you start, this is base 4. You start with 1, you go times 4, times 4, times 4. Until what? Until you get more than you need. I've only got 62. I've got to make 62 out of base 4 numbers. So, I don't need any 64s. That would be too much. Even if I just took one 64, that's more than 62. That's too much. So, how many 16s do I need? Well, you can long divide on your calculator or, or divide by hand. 62 divided by 16 on your calculator will be 3 point something, which means you need 3 16s. Three sixteens will go into 62. So what is 3 times 16? It's 48. Your calculator will tell you if you're rusty on that one. 48. That means right now th I have three sixteens, which is 48. So I've used up 48. My, my number is 62. I've used up 48 already. Let's see what that leaves and put a 5, put a 1, that's 4. That's 14 left to go, right? Because 3 sixteens is 48, and I'm supposed to represent the whole 62. So I've got 14 left to go. So how many 4s go into 14, which is what I have left to represent? 3 4s, right? Because that would be 12. Subtract 12, 2 left. So that's 2. So 3, 3, 2, base 4, is the same as 62, normal. 62, normal. How do you know that's normal? There's no base number. There's, it doesn't say blow up base whatever. So it's just a base 10 number. It doesn't say anything below it. It's a normal number. 62, normal number, is the same as 3, 3, 2 in base 4. Okay, number 7. We're supposed to change 2, 4, 2, base 5. What does it say? Um into base 10. So, 
two, four, two. Now notice the five is written right next to the two, four, two. So that means these numbers already are base five numbers. So that means this is the ones place, as always, times five, times five. So that's what it means, right? The, this first two is in the 25's place, because this is a base five number. See how that's different than the last problem? They started me with a normal number, said change it to base four. Now they're starting me with a foreign number, base five. So two 25's, that's 50. Four times five, that's 20. And two times one, that's two, added up, 72. This is the normal number, 72. 242 base 5 is the normal number, 72. Let's try part B. B is um, 5 ones base 2. So they want me to change this one to a normal number. See how it's got a base 2 written by it? So that means these numbers are in the base 2 system. This is the 1s, 2s, 4s, 8s, 16s place. See how I found those place values? You start with 1. In base 2, you just go times 2, times 2, times 2. So that's 1, 16. That's 16. And 1, 8. And 1, 4. And 1, 2. And 1, 1. Add them up. 21, 31. That's the normal number, 31. Base 10 system, normal, 31. All right, let's go to part C. Part C says 7, 9, E. Base 12. In the base 12 system. Okay. So, let's try it out. So, this is the 1's place, 12's place, 144's place. See what I did? Base 12. You start with 1, you go times 12, times 12. So, it's 7 144's. I have no idea what that's going to use my calculator. I'm getting a thousand and eight. And then nine times twelve, hundred and eight. And E, what does E stand for? E is eleven. Eleven times one is eleven. Add those up. It's at sixteen seventeen. Two one. So one one two seven. So there it is. This is 1,127 normal. 79E base 12 is 1,127 normal base 10 number. Okay, so here in the base 2 system, they want me to write the first 15 numbers. Now in base 2, you're never going to see a 2, so here we go. So 1, comma, 2. Oh, nope, can't do a 2. What do you do instead of a 2? You do 1, 0. Oh. You go to the next column over. You carry. In other words, all right. Then you just keep adding one every time. So, one oh one one, one two. Oh nope. So whenever you're about to write a two, instead you write a zero and carry to the next column. So that one will become two two oh. Oh nope. Can't even have a two in that column. So what do you do? Anytime you're about to write a two, instead you write a zero and carry. We already do a hundred, but that's really just four. Remember? Remember the base 2 system? 1's place, 2's place, 4's place? That's 4. That's 1, 4, no 2's, no 1's. That's 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. That is 4 in the base 2 system. So the rule is, anytime you're, you just keep adding 1, adding 1, adding 1. Anytime you're about to write 2, though, instead, right, because you can't have 2 in a base 2 system. Anytime you're about to write 2, instead you write 0 and carry. So here we go. What's next? 1, oh, 1. I used to add 1. 101. I'm going to do five. There's five numbers. I'm going to go down here. 102. One. Oh, wait, wait. Can't have 102, huh? <laughs> so instead of 102, what do you do? You write um, zero and carry. 110. One, oh. Then you just keep adding one. 111. One, one. One, one, two. Oh, no. Can't write two. Instead, write zero and carry. Make this a two. Oh, can't have a two there. Instead, write zero and carry. Oh, can't even have a two there. Instead, write zero and carry. We're already at a thousand. And just keep adding one. Thousand and one. Thousand and two. Nope, can't write a two. Instead, write zero and carry. That was five more numbers, right? So we're at ten numbers now. Let's do the last five numbers. Here we go. So where are we at? One oh one oh. One oh one one. Just keep adding one. Just keep adding one. Every time you're about to write two, 
Instead, write 0 and carry. Oop, can't write that too. Instead, write 0 and carry. Oop, can't write that too. Instead, write 0 and carry. 1, 1, 0, oh, 0. Oh. Let me rewrite that. That got confusing. 1, 1, 0, oh, 0. Oh. Okay, let's keep adding 1. 1, 1, 0, oh, 1. 1, 1, 0, oh, 2. No, no 2. Instead, write 0 and carry. 1, 1, 1, 1. There we go. There's the first 15 numbers in base 2. Now the same thing they want me to do in base 9. So 8B base 9 first 15 numbers. Okay. So 1, 2, 3, it's a little easier, 4, 5. You just, you, you just can't write a 9 or bigger. Keep going. 6, 7, 8, 9. There's the first time we're in trouble. Can't write a 9 in base, just like in base 2, you can't write a 2. In base 9, you can't write a 9 or higher. So what do you do when you're about to write 9? Instead, you write 0 and carry. We skip from 8 to 10. Why? Because that's really 9. Remember, we're in the base 9 system. This is the 1's place, the 9's place. That's 1, 9, no 1's. That's 9. Then go back to adding 1. 1, 1. Right? You just keep adding 1. 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, and we're done. That's the first 15 numbers. Anytime you're about to write a 9, right here, instead write 0 and carry. Then just go back to adding 1. Okay, so here we are, number nine. John took all his money, spent 52 on a radio, and half of what was left uh, uh, on presents for his friends. Um, okay, so then put four thirteenths of his remaining money into his checking account and donated the 180 that was left to charity. How much did John originally have? All right, let's go through it. So what's the first thing John did? He spent 52. Let's say he take took X out of his savings account. That's what we're trying to figure out. X, how much he had originally in his savings account. He, he took his money out, X, and then he spent 52. What does that do? That's X minus 52, right? That This is the amount left after spending 52, right? Okay, he spent 52 on radio and half of what was left from that on presents. If you spend half, what's left? The other half. So the next layer is to take half, right? And that'll be left after half on presents. If you spend half, you leave half. Then, four-thirteenths of the remaining money into a checking account. Four-thirteenths. So if you put four-thirteenths, if you put four-thirteenths of it somewhere, how much do you leave? You leave the rest. What is the rest? One minus four-thirteenths. In other words, nine-thirteenths, right? The rest is nine-thirteenths. If I say, hey, four out of 13 people left the room, how many were left? Nine, right? So if you put four thirteenths of your money somewhere, that means you leave the rest, you leave nine thirteenths. So back over here then, we got to go times nine thirteenths because that's what's left after... Putting four thirteenths, putting it where? Where do you put it? Into an account. Into an account. Right? He left nine thirteenths. If he put four thirteenths again, he left nine thirteenths. So you see, I just keep multiplying by what he has left, right? Nine thirteenths of the money is left. This is the amount left. Finally, the 180 that was left. Oh, so that amount that was left is 180. It just said the 180. See what it says? The 180 that was left. So that's our little equation. we got to solve that equation now. Rewrite it. 
give a little more room here. 9 thirteenths times a half times x minus 52. Okay, so let's solve that thing. How do we do it? Well, let's um, let's get rid of this 9 thirteenths first off. How are we going to get rid of that? Multiply both sides by the upside down. So then that brings us down the half, x minus 52. And on the other side, 9 thirteenths, what is that? 20 is 260. All right, now how do you get rid of that half? Again, you multiply by the upside down. Cancels it out. And that's, um, what's that, 520. And last step, you add 52. And x equals, what's that, 5. 72. So $572 is what originally he had. Okay, so number 10 here. Vana scored 39 goals in her soccer kicking practice. If her success to failure was 13 to 12, how many times did she attempt a goal? All right, I'll bring it down here. So success to failure ratio is 13 to 12. I'll make that a fraction. This this colon in the middle is the same thing as a fraction. They're just making like a sideways fraction. Same thing. And that's, notice carefully the words. Success to failure. So 13 successes for every 12 failures. That's equal to, now what does it say? She scored 39. What is that? That's success, huh? 39 success over X. Now careful, when we solve that equation for X, what's X going to be? Look where X is sitting. Failures. X is going to be failures. So when we get our answer for X, it'll be failures. She made 39 goals. X will tell us how many f she missed, how many she failed to make. Okay, But that's not going to be the answer to their question quite yet because their question is, how many did she attempt? They didn't say how many did she fail. So we'll need to add the amount she failed to the amount she succeeded to get the total amount she attempted at the end. Here we go. Let's solve. How do we solve an equation with two equal fractions? Cross multiply. 13 times x equals 12 times 39. Now I want to solve that for x. I'm actually going to divide right now because watch, it'll make things easier. x equals, now how do we simplify that over there? 13 into 39, 3 times, 3 times 12, 36. So that means 36 is what? Fail. That's her fails. She failed. She kicked, and it didn't go in 36 times. And we know that she had uh, 39 success. So if you had 39 failures and 36 success, if you add these up, that equals some big number, 60, 75, Number attempted, 75. Okay, so number 11 here. Set of tires is on sale for 30% off, bringing the price down to 161. What was the original? Well, for percent increase, decrease, which is what this is, right? It's a percent, 30% off, it's a percent decrease. Problems. I gave you the formula. It's original. Um times 1 plus or minus the percent equals the new. And the plus is for the increase, and the minus is for the decrease. So the original, what's the original price? We don't know, that's what they're asking for. So call that, you know, call that x times 1. Now 30% off, that's a decrease, minus 0.30, make that a decimal. Getting kind of scribbly here. Equals the new price, bringing the price down, the new price, 161.
That makes sense? Now let's uh, clean up that formula. What, what can we clean it up? That's x times 0.70, isn't it? Is 161. Because $1, take away 30 cents, is 70 cents. Bring that over here. x times 0.70 is 161. Uh, does that make sense? Because if something is 30% off, then it's 70% of what it used to be. How do you finish solving for x? Divide by 0.70. And then use your calculator. 161 divided by 0.7 is $230. So the original price was $230. It was higher than the 161, $230. Okay, number 12. Five-ninths of the students at a nearby college live in the dorms. 6,000 live in the dorms. How many are there in the college? So five-ninths of the students are in the dorms. Let me just write out what they're saying there. So um, 6,000 are in the dorms. So five-ninths of times the number of students is the dorm amount 6,000. Does that make sense what they're saying? If X is the number of students at the school, the college, total students in the college, 5 ninths of the total students times total students is equal to the 6,000 in the dorms. So there's our equation. Solve for X. How do you solve that equation for X? Multiply by the upside down, the reciprocal. Cancels, cancels x equals, so 6,000 times 9 fifths, I'm getting 10,800 students in the college. Okay, number 13, on a map, one-third of an inch is five miles. Two cities are 17 inches apart. What's their actual distance? So one-third of an inch for every five miles equals... 17 inches for x miles. I want to find out how many actual miles. So see how we just set up a ratio of units, inches over miles is inches over miles. And then we solve that by cross-multiplying. Diagonal, diagonal. One-third x is 5 times 17. One-third x is yeah, what's that? 85. Now, how do you finish solving for x there? Multiply by the upside down. 3 over 1. 3 over 1. Cancels. x is, what's that? 240, 255. 255 actual miles. Okay, number 14. What is part A? What is 8% of 31? So, 8%. Of 31. That's 0.08. Of is times. Times 31. Use your calculator. I'm doing it the same myself. 2.48. All right, let's do part B. Part B. That was A. Here's B. 11 is... What percent of 22? So 11 is, is equals what percent, that's x, of, of is times 22. So there's our little equation. How do we solve that little equation for x? The what percent is the x? Divide by 22. Boom. x is 0.5. But careful, 0.5 is not our final answer because they said what percent. So we got to turn that into a percentage. So that means, I think you might think, well, okay, we'll just stick a percent on there. Well, if I was just to stick a percent on there, that 0.5% cannot be the same as 0.5, right? Because remember, that percent means something. It means, what does it mean again? Percent means per or divide by 100. So 0.5 divided by 100 is not the same as 0.5. So what is? What would you need to do? You would what, Dividing by 100 moves the decimal left two places. So I would have to need, actually need to move it right two places, make it 50 with the decimal right there, so that 50 divided by 100, right? What is 50 divided by 100? That would move it back 
two places, it would go boom, boom, and become 0.5. See, that's the same as 0.5. So 0.5 is the same as 50 divided by 100. So that's the same as 50%. Because that's what, that's what percent means, is, is per 100 divided by 100. So the answer is, what part B? 50%. And you know that, huh? You know 11 is 50% of 22. Part C, 22 is 30% of what number? 21 is equals 30% point, or change that to a decimal, right? Because that percent again means per 100 divided by 100, so the decimal right here goes back two places. Of, of is times, what number, the what is always our x. So there's what we're trying to solve, we're trying to solve for x. How do you solve that a little equation for x? Divide by the point 0.30. That cancels out. x equals 21 divided by, I, I think it's the answer 70, isn't it? Let me double check on my calculator. Yeah, 70 is the answer. Part C. Finally, let's do part D. Part D. Seven percent of sixty-four seven. The percent again means per hundred means divide by hundred. So the decimal's right here. Divide by hundred, it goes back two places. Point oh seven of times sixty-four. Remember, of means times. So we'll do that in our calculator. And we get 4.48. There it is. Okay, so here on number 15, Gauss's approach. Let me, let me bring it down here. So we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 so dot, 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 all the way to 98. Remember what we learned from Gauss, that it basically we make these rainbows. That'll be 99, right? 1 plus 98 is 99. The one right before it would be 97. 2 plus 97 is 99. The one right before that would be 96. 3 plus 96. Yeah, they're all going to be 99. All those rainbows are going to come out 99. So basically, we have a whole bunch of 99s. How many 99s do we have? Well, every rainbow is 99. How many rainbows? Number of number of rainbows is going to be 98 divided by 2, which is 49, isn't it? Because there's one rainbow for every two numbers. There's 98 numbers divided by 2 is 49 rainbows. So each, so 49 rainbows, each totaling 99. So 49 times 99, I'm getting 48, 51. Okay, let's try Part B, same thing, Gauss's approach. 15 part B down here. 1, 3, 5, da, 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 all the way to 103. In fact, I think maybe I'll write out those last few numbers. It would be 99, 101, 103. Okay, so same thing, let's do the rainbows. So 1 and 103 make. 104, 3 and 101 makes 104, 5 and 99. So they all make 104, but the question is, how many 104s do we have here? Well, um, number of rainbows is 103. Oh, no, 103 is an odd number. So, um, so first off, notice that um, we're not doing, if we went all the way to 104, you can, you can picture it this way. If you went to 104 and divide it by 2, you would get the, you would, you were going to, you would get 52, and then you got to take 52 and divide by 2 again to get 26. There's only 26 rainbows. Why? Because there's um, the, the numbers 1 to... If I just said, hey, how many numbers 
1 to 103. If I just said 1 to 103, how many numbers? Well, basically, it's 104 divided by 2. That's how many... Um, that's how many odd, if I said, I'm sorry, if I said how many odd numbers, if I just said how many odd numbers, 1 to 103, if I take 104 divided by 2, I'd get 52 odd numbers, and then, so 52 odd numbers, and then every two odd numbers together makes one rainbow. So divide by 2 again. So you divide by 2 because it's only, you're only doing odd numbers, divide by 2 again, because every rainbow has two numbers, so you get 26 rainbows. So then my final answer is going to be 26 times 104, isn't it? So what is that? I'm getting 2704.